Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Talks First. I am one of your hosts. I'm CT. And I'm Solo. So this episode is a little bit different because Solo and I are actually not in the same room. We are across the country from each other now. And because we were planning on taking the next two weeks off, uh, Mm -hmm. off the podcast, because I'm on vacation right now. And then Vanity Fair happened and... (laughs) We have enough Ruined material everything. for seven podcasts, and I just we just needed to talk about it. Mm-hmm. It was an absolute whirlwind, and now Solo has stayed off the radar a little bit, so she doesn't really know everything that I'm going to be telling her. Yep, so, so this is going to be kind of like a live reaction yeah. and a podcast all rolled in together. Exactly. You're welcome. So have you missed me? How, how, how's the... How's the I house been? I actually have missed you. I just <laughs> sit on the couch and eat goldfish alone <laughs> and and watch scary movies alone it's sad well at least you can walk well you were gonna watch scary movies alone anyway so well i know but i can't even pause it and crawl into your room and be like i'm scared <laughs> like i normally do uh so anyway we have a lot to talk about we're gonna i won't be surprised if this podcast goes well into two hours hopefully this works out because uh this is a recording uh technique that we've never tried before so no. we're just, we've done multiple tests and hopefully the actual record uh sets up so let's start at the very beginning before all hell broke loose okay and just talk about the the photos the the covers Ooh, yeah so we have four covers we have one that's uh first order luke and uh ray uh the resistance and one of just leia so what what are your reaction cover reactions I love all of them except for the First Order, because why is Hux on it? (laughs) I know. I'm sorry to anyone who likes Hux, but we... (laughs) He's such a, like, secondary skeezball character. He doesn't deserve a cover. He doesn't deserve to be on the cover to me. Yeah, and I I like how you, uh, Solo, sent me an edit where she was like, I fixed the the First Order cover and just scribbled out Hux's face. And then I put another sticker on it that said, like, buzz off. And it had a mosquito. And I was like, clever. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Uh, and, like, no offense. I mean, this has nothing to do with Dom Hall. Dom Hall I can't even say his name. It's an interesting name. Uh, but the actor just... himself. But he looks so gross and, like, slimy compared to everybody else. Yeah, but um, they, they just put so much product in his hair that you're like, ugh, ugh, ugh. It's a look that I don't like. And I'm I'm wondering if they're doing that on purpose. Because, they might be because uh, he is a a bad guy, and so he definitely looks way skeezier than he did. He was, but I do almost like more prim and proper Hux a little bit more, and like high fashion Hux. Yeah. But maybe they're doing it on purpose because they're like, yeah, you're not supposed to like this guy. <laughs> now it's gonna make him slimy. Why Why does everyone seem to like him? Let's try to make him look less attractive. Because we're not making merch of this guy. Yeah. Um, so we have their cover. Uh, Kylo Kylo's good. Unmasked. Phasma also unmasked. And it seems oh pretty God. implied that both of them are going to be unmasked during the film. I'm sure Phasma's it's wearing her right. helmet on occasion and probably for oh, most yeah. of the movie. But I'd love to see her unmasked in the film. Considering, um, like, now that we people actually know that it's a woman in the suit. Mm-hmm. And so then we have... Luke and Ray, which is probably, I, I can't decide which one's my favorite. I do like that this one. I mean, there's not a lot happening in it, but I like that this one's on location, and I wish they got to do more on location photos since Me all of them too. seem like they're done in a studio besides Luke and Ray's mm-hmm. uh, stuff. But so that one might be my favorite just because it's there's more story behind it, mm-hmm. and then we have a really nice one of Leia, which. I'm glad that she gets her own cover, and then one of the that's gonna be the one I try to get. I'm yeah. gonna try to get Leia, but it's probably gonna be sold out. It'll be fun to see which ones we can find. Mm-hmm. It'll be a fun little scavenger hunt when it eventually comes out, and because it comes out, we live in Los Angeles or in the area, and it comes out a week early in LA, and of course it's the one time I'm gone. I'm gone mm-hmm. twice a year, and of course it comes out early in LA when I am halfway or across the country. Yeah, and so now I have to try to go between work and try to find them, when normally you could just do that. Yep, uh, I would say Barnes and Noble is your best bet. So especially yeah, when, that's yeah. where I'm gonna try for sure. Um, but 
Yeah, uh, we get. Uh, this is actually cool. I think this is true. I I mean, obviously, I just read this on the internet, so it might not be. But uh, mm-hmm. Kelly Marie Tran. Uh, is, well, I mean, obviously, she is on the cover, but she is the first Asian woman to appear on the cover of Vanity Fair. Oh damn! Yeah, so that's that's really cool. And, and she's on it looking so smug. She's like, <laughs> I am so excited for her. I am. I love her little face on it. She's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> Fuck we have, you. We have a lot of rows to talk about further down, but I'm glad mm-hmm. that they all, that she's on the resistance part of it because she is going to be this big deal. And honestly, from what I'm reading, Poe doesn't seem like he's going to be in it very often, which honestly is what I was expecting. He wasn't meant to be that big of a character. No, he was And, wasn't. uh,. He'll probably he was meant to be very die. secondary, secondary, because it seems like just Finn and Rose are on this plot B adventure, mm-hmm. and Poe is not there, because for a while we just assumed Poe would also be there, but it kind of seems like he's not going to be, but of course that's all whatever. Um, we also had got additional like- photos of Leia and her daughter, uh, Leia and Billy, mm. in uh, the... The one of Luke and Leia, that's all I, like, wanted. It's actually my lock screen on my phone now. Yeah. Because, oh, they look I'm like, so I kind of wish that was the cover of one of them. I do, like, too. Kill me. I, actually, you're right. I would have loved if that was the cover of one of them. Um, and Even someone did a fan Luke edit of Kylo and Leia. Yeah. And I know they probably didn't take any photos together, but what I would give if they did. Me, too. Um, that's, that's her space son. I know. So we we got more photos of Ray, also on Octoon. and she has the lightsaber, and we got dancing Kylo, which mm-hmm. the Saturday Night Fever pose. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's such an extra stance. God, I've I love seen, Kylo. I've seen those gifts, even though I've br- laid low. I definitely still those saw are those. Everywhere. I, I mean, because Kylo looks so sick and sullen in all of these photos. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, because even in his, like, dramatic pose one, he looks like he'd been crying for the last ten years. Yep. Which well, probably isn't totally That's accurate. pretty accurate, yep. Yeah. The, the mask comes off and he's just all puffy-faced all the time, constantly the, the, crying. The, the, that's the, the reason why he has the voice modulator, because he's constantly crying, and it's he's just... Like, <laughs> you need the modulator to make it sound like I'm not crying. Yep. So, uh... We also got basically confirmation that the gloved hand that's in the trailer is Luke, and that's what we thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, Luke's wearing the glove uh, in those photos. And it's interesting. Why was he n- not wearing it? I'm not sure if it freaks Ray out, so he's like, oh, I'll, be, I'll put it on when I have company, but... <laughs> or maybe but he's insecure about it. Who I knows? feel like, I mean, I feel like it's got to be a plot point that his hand is robotic again. I mean, obviously it was always robotic, but it had the skin. So it, yeah, it, it looked, used to look a lot like an actual hand. Yeah, and now it looks more like Anakin's, where it's just the robot, the robotic stuff, rather than the yeah. like fully skinned robotic hand. Yeah, it's just the mechno part of mechno hand. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that's still got to be a part of the story somewhere. Mm-hmm. Of how yeah. that happened, and I still, I'm still thinking it's it's happened. It's happened in the fire. Yeah, me too. Um, but we'll we'll see about that one. Can't confirm. If not what a lost opportunity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't conspire too much about a uh, glove, but I think that's probably the direction. I'm just gonna keep mentioning it because I was right about whose glove it was. It seems mm-hmm. like, but I I'm keeping tally of these predictions. You're like, one, uh, I got that one right. Two, got it. Got it. it. I got one prediction right, and it's the glove. And uh, so then we we got some more just scenic photos. I shouldn't say scenic, but more character photos. We got mm-hmm. ones of the new characters, but we also got ones of the Canto Bite, the casino characters. Yes. And uh, Ryan Johnson ex- like, described them as rich assholes. And <laughs> That's what they look like. They do. And a lot of people were complaining, and I see where they're coming from, because a part of me wants to see familiar aliens as well, but then these are all new species that aren't very colorful, but I think that's intentional. Everybody's mm-hmm. dressed in black and white, and everyone has very, like, earthy tones, all the aliens do. There's no color in there. And I think 
even though later on, which I'll talk about, Ryan said there's no political political allegory. Mm-hmm. I'm like that's BS. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but you can say that. But I right, he's just doing PR. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, these stories have political allegory, and they're not going to be obvious. Like, they're not going to have somebody say "Make the galaxy great again." That's yeah, no. something he said. I'm like, no, but there's going to be some things and. But he can I, show them being, like, literally gray and, like, what a, like, uh, what should I say? Not gray because of this is Star Wars and the word gray has such bad connotation. <laughs> but everyone being, like, neutral and sullen and therefore, like, kind of dead on the inside. Like, these are people who are, like, they're at a casino. They're dressed in, like, these black and white to, like, kind of separate them. And they're muted colors. They're dead on the inside. They're politicians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you have these rich assholes that, again, like, they don't, you don't see any color. It's just mm-hmm. black and white. And they also think that this could just kind of be representative of how they see the world. Because mm-hmm. when you have that much money and things always go your way, you probably only see the world in black and white. And I think that's mm-hmm. probably, or that could be symbolic. Who knows if it yeah. is. But two people have, like, a little splash of purple on them. But it seems pretty dull and drab but super high class. Watch those planet. two characters with purple on them be the only two, like, kind of okay characters. I know, that's uh, early <laughs> predictions. You heard it here first. Those and, two characters might have lines. Uh, this this might, this could be totally not true at all, but one of the people in the lineup looked, it, I might be making this up completely, so I'm gonna, we're gonna skip past it really quick, but looked like Daisy Ridley. It's not her. But we did hear rumors that Daisy Ridley's stand-in or stun double was mm-hmm. playing, uh, was on Canto Bite in some extravagant outfit. So I wouldn't be surprised if that actually was her, and she it's does cute. just get to be a character now. But I'm like, she looks like Ray, and I'm like, oh wait, Daisy's stun double was on Canto Bite or was seen in some extravagant outfit, and people thought that was maybe Ray, or but I could see it maybe just. That's cute, though. Yeah, let her have a little bit of extra fun. She gets to be a fun. little character now. Yeah. And probably, I mean, we'll we'll reference the photos back again probably somewhere else in this conversation, but we, I have three pages of notes, and I'm one-sixth of the way down of the oh, first perfect. one. Uh-huh, good. So, yeah, uh, last but not least, we're going to talk about Mature Ray, um, mm. because... In her outfits, we do know she has another outfit that she wears later on in the movie. Yes. But it, I mean, has caused a little bit of controversy online, but it is interesting how they put Ray, and I don't want to say something more sexy, because it's not sexy, but it is definitely mm-hmm. more form-fitting and more... It's more uh, revealing. Yes. Like, I don't want to say stereotypically feminine, uh, mm-hmm. or makes you think that when you look at it, because you're like, oh, it's more shapely and mm-hmm. more low-cut... And I definitely don't don't think it sexualizes her in any way, but definitely, no. uh, I think it could represent some maturing of how the audience sees Ray, because she's I, very innocent. In I think film. it's symbolic. I think the wide openness of her top is very symbolic of her open heart <laughs> and her forgiving nature. <laughs> oh my God, you sound like some like fanboy defending his porn. <laughs> I sound like everyone de- defending Power Girl or something. Oh, yeah, oh that's exactly. exactly what that's I exactly like. what you sound like. <laughs> um, actually, it's symbolic because she didn't have a symbol, so now she just wears no symbol. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. But yeah, again, I think this is probably just going to be some representation of uh, wanting the audience to see her as as growing up. Um, yeah. Because Cause, again, it's not like an overtly sexual outfit. It's no. really not. My eye was immediately drawn to like it because I was like, "Whoa!" It's just Star yeah, Wars. it's more form fitting. It's more shapely. Mm-hmm. She looks great. Um, she look. She does look great. But, I mean, there's also the, uh, and we know she's wearing that outfit during the rain scene. Mm-hmm. So, it, so. It, the context there will be really interesting. I won't go into that too much, but mm-hmm. it will be very interesting. Um, so, moving on from there, we're just going to talk very shortly that there was some Lego leaks. Um, so, if you don't want to hear anything, this isn't super spoilery. This is just, there were some photos of the Legos that are going to be coming out that I guess on Force Friday. So, it probably mm-hmm. won't even be that big of a deal. 
uh, Poe because was called... Lego sets normally aren't that big of a deal. No, unless it... it's called like literally like Attack on Star Killer, and you're like, oh, okay, got it. This uh... is a C in one, but yeah, like Poe was called Captain Poe Dameron. I th- that's a new thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray has her hair down, uh, mm. and she's wearing her new outfit, and she's she comes with a First Order Walker set, and. Legos kind of, it doesn't matter what set they come in for the most part, Mm -hmm. um, unless it's a scene set like we've talked about, but usually they just come in because it's meant to- what we'll sell together. Yeah, exactly. It's meant to entertain kids. So, Mm. and for collectors, they kind of put characters far apart from each other. And I doubt- they do. (laughs) I feel like Ray is going to spend most of the time on Oct 2, so it doesn't really seem like she fit, will probably fit in anything like that great of a Lego set. So yeah, I know. They were it. just like, well, everyone's going to want this Ray. Let's put her in an expensive set with like a, a walker because then we can charge more for it. Exactly. <laughs> for the people who just there. want the Ray Lego, they're going to have to buy like a $60 set. So yeah, I'm not going to speculate too much on what that means because I don't, I think it just means, hey, Ray comes with a really expensive thing because we want people yeah. to buy it because we know people are going to want Ray. So, yeah, let's move on to, we're back to Vanity Fair. Let's talk about the main article, because there was a bunch. Uh, but let's talk yes. about the main article. Uh, I I found it a little bit insulting. <laughs> and not even, uh, like, I'll talk about what you guys, I know what a lot of you think we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about it, but not till later. But they just because, I'm not sure if if Mark made this joke, that's fine. But the author made this comment about uh, Carrie and Mark having to undergo, like, diet plans. So they Mm -hmm. were back in leading shape. And he had this comment about Harrison Ford was under less obligation having retained his leading man shape because he never stopped being a leading man. That was, like, his comment. Like, that's... That's kind of rude. It's not kind of rude. That's very rude. It's really rude. Especially because Carrie has never stopped working Mm -hmm. in entertainment. She just wasn't very... She wasn't in the acting roles a lot. Yeah. And she was very much still... Same with Mark. Oh, yeah. And so Mark Mark made this joke. That's that's fine. But it's... The way it was written, it sounded like the author just wrote that in. I'm Mm -hmm. like, that's that's just kind of rude. If Mark made the joke, then it's funny. But... In fact, I can probably name more of things that Mark and Carrie have worked on in the past years than I can of Harrison Ford. Maybe that's just me, uh, but I definitely think that they were definitely leading in more things. Yeah, it's I just mean, that he... Mark had a lot of voice acting roles, so I yeah. think we can easily... I Yeah, I could probably name more stuff that Mark has voice acted in than movies mm-hmm. Harrison has in the last five years. Mm-hmm. But like, all I can think of for Harrison is... Uh, Age of Adeline, and obviously Star Wars, but mm-hmm. um, what I don't know when the last Indiana Jones came out, but they're making another one. He's gonna be in there. And yeah, and isn't he also gonna be in? Uh, never mind, I can't remember. I think it's Space One. Space One. Oh, I, I think I know. Ooh, I know what you're talking about, but I cannot tell you the name of it. I was literally gonna call it like a space western, and I was like, "That's Star People Wars." We're gonna think I mean Star Wars. No, I know, but... I know exactly what you're talking about, but I. Oh, is it is it Blade? Is he gonna be in the new oh. Blade? Maybe, maybe something like that. Sure. A- anyway. Sure. Uh, space vampires, maybe. We, maybe it's something like that. You heard it here first, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, we w- we won't dwell on it because I can't really edit uh, from how we're recording, but. Something around there. Um, we yeah, learned about we'll Paige, uh, yeah. which is Rose's sister, which I'm very, very, very excited slash nervous about because pretty sure Paige is going to die. Yeah. It, yeah, probably. And because uh, I, I love sibling relationships. Sibling relationships are actually my favorite out of everything, out of all of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So I am really excited about uh, Paige existing but uh, long she will yeah i i do kind of feel like since we haven't heard of her before she might die fairly early on to be a character motivator for rose yeah. because we know Paige is a resistance gunner so she has a bit more of an exciting job than rose does Ooh. so i can oh s- no yeah 
I, oh no, and they probably work together, and then she probably dies, and that's where Finn comes in. It, and I could see Rose <laughs> being like saying she's a mechanic because she's she kind of wants to stay out of the action, mm-hmm. and then she one uh, page if if this happens, we don't know. Because this guy can actually go either way. Either she can look up to her sister and kind of be envious of these stories her sister has and decides that she Mm. wants her own adventures too. Or that if her sister does, unfortunately, pass, it -hmm. could be a motivator for her to start living her life. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, I have hopes she doesn't die, but uh, honestly, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm speculating she absolutely does yeah. die, um, which sucks. Yeah, and uh, moving past that, there was also some concern because it kind of came out that they don't have a concrete plan for these movies, mm. and they kind of just hand it off to the next director and let them do what they want with it, mm-hmm. which makes me a little nervous, and I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm sure there's got to be some plan like yeah. maybe not the details of the the plot of how like step A to step B but i really got to have a feeling that at least they have some things planned for the characters because you want to see the story be consistent all the way through you want to see the things that mm-hmm. were operating in movie 1 operate in movie 3 yes um and i know i'm sure there has to be points where like the director like leaves notes and he's like I was setting this up maybe go through with it you know what I mean yeah and I hope that other directors listen to each other that's because mm-hmm. I'm sure they well we know that we know that they talk to each other mm-hmm. I just hope they listen to each other because mm-hmm. the story group was saying like we don't impose any plot points we kind of give uh, make sure everything runs smoothly and nothing contradicts each other but we don't impose any plot points and then Ryan Johnson was saying that he was actually he wanted more Input from Direction. them. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, they gave me a, all my all I had was episode seven. That was my only like template, and then they're like, you do whatever you want from there. So I'm hoping yeah. they are a little more. At least Ryan was like, no, I I moved up to San Francisco for a while, and had them really help. I had meetings with them twice a week to mm-hmm. really help me with this script. So I'm hoping that Colin Trevorrow is also like this. And that they all listen to each other. Yeah, I'm not worried for this movie, but I, that does make me worried for the next movie. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sorry, I did not care for a Jurassic World. Uh, I do want to watch Safety Not Guaranteed because that's mm-hmm. apparently the movie that put him on Kathleen Kennedy's radar. Radar. Okay. So I do want to watch that, and uh, apparently, well, I'll talk to you when we get to when we get down to it later. But got it. Um. Hopefully there's a bit more of a plan. It just was slightly concerning, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that all of the directors are very willing to listen to each other and uh, that they're not stuck in their own yeah that they'll kind of hum- so humble much themselves. that they ignore yeah that they ignore yeah. everybody else. I think Ryan will be fine, mm-hmm. but who knows? Who knows? Uh, this is the first time I've heard anything later on about this movie that I haven't really liked, so. We'll see. Um, yeah, we have the two new characters, DJ, who is uh, Benicio Del Toro, and Holdo, who is Laura Dern. And God. God, like the new Star Wars naming convention is literally just taking an existing character and changing one letter. Because <laughs> I've been seeing so many people call her Hondo already, and her name's Holdo. Uh. And I've been getting so confused because they're talking about, and it's just been like a spelling error on their behalf. Mm-hmm. But even when reading the books, because I think in Af- I think it was Aftermath, there was a character named Nazine, and mm-hmm. there's a character already established named Buzzy- ba- ba- Bazine. That was mm-hmm. a stutter fest. But and also Sabine and Satine. Yep, there, just a lot of. Taking... Where I still to this day call the I'll call them switch the wrong it all name. the time. Every time. Uh, oh, there's one for Kanan too, isn't there? Yeah, there's Kanan, and then there's the girl in the Ahsoka book. Oh, Kaden. Yep. Kaden. Yep. So that's the new like name convention. Change one letter. This is my new main character, Mook. Mook my walker. This is my new main character, Ben. Oh, I'm sorry, Ren. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> <That's>... Len. <laughs> Den. Gar. Dengar. Dengar. 
<laughs> God, I hate Dango. But, yeah, I, uh, DJ seems like this skeezy guy who, uh, hold those, uh, just- Resistance is it just D officer. dot J dot? Is it just DJ? Apparently, like apparently his name is never mentioned in the film. They okay. just call him DJ, and Got we'll it. understand why later. So I oh, assume is he a DJ? he's probably is he, is he up there spinning? I, I assume he's kind of like a remixer. Like he can, he's probably like a hacker of sorts. Got it. That's okay. what I kind of assume, but who knows? No, um, he's just literally up there spinning space spin discs. And that's when Kylo comes in with his dramatic uh, space dance poses. Yep. There you go. That's how we tie like, it all together. He's like, oh my together. god, I love this song. I want to dance to it. And then it's, well, now we're in Yuri on Ice. Anyway, back to Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go there, man. That's a <laughs> Don't cross path. the stream. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, we have confirmation, which, I mean, we basically knew that Carrie was meant to have the central, like... Mm main trilogy or original trilogy role in episode nine and that was expected which, this is just uh, what i wanted to shove down people's throats this mm-hmm. this paragraph because that was the one paragraph that i saw and i was like that's what we have been screaming about for so long when everyone's like nip, 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 nip. no carrie was not supposed to i mean leia mm-hmm. was not supposed to die at the end of these movies leia was supposed to continue on we knew that and now we have a source that we can actually point at and go see yeah see 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 and oh, it just it just devastates me. I mean, at this point, uh, I read a really good Twitter thread that was mm-hmm. just like, as much as it hurts us and it makes us angry, mm-hmm. like Lucasfilm has to make this decision and it's gonna yeah. suck no matter what. That they just have to make the decision. And mm-hmm. I'm like, no one won- wanted this. To obviously, it's no obviously. Um, and it and it's the. Obviously, her role in Star Wars is way feeble in comparison to like her what her family is feeling for her passing. Mm-hmm. I definitely recognize. I that. just wish I'm like Carrie, I just come down as, as a Force talk. ghost and let us know what you. I want to know what you would have what what you want us to do or what yeah. you want Lucasfilm to do. That's mm-hmm. that's what I want to know. If she's like CG me, that's fine. Uh, then I'm, I'm like, am, am I a big fan of the CG? No, I well, especially not like keeping her as a prominent character. Yeah, I where mean, it would just be an entirely CG. Yeah, but me and you be... are on the same boat, is that we just want her present, we want them to use old footage and just keep her alive, so we can mm-hmm. still get what was intended for Nine in mm-hmm. books and comics. Um, Because I uh, I just want what was meant for her so badly. But yep. we'll see, and whatever decision they go with, it just sucks no matter what. Um, But, and more awesome Carrie news uh, she gets to slap Poe yes yeah, she does I am so excited for the scene and until proven so otherwise curious. I really hope it's because Poe said something about Kylo I that's what I want it to be is yeah he says something about Han or Kylo or Luke mm-hmm. and in sort of a degrading fashion and I wonder does Poe know who knows that Kylo is her son Uh, it would almost be really interesting if he says something thinking that like she also hates carlo yeah because they don't know who he is he's just this bad guy Mm -hmm. so he says something and she just smacks him and that's kind of how people are maybe start to catch on that he's someone of importance to her Mm -hmm. because i really do wonder how wide that knowledge is of people know who who that it can't be very wide right because i feel like i feel like she kind of well no she didn't she definitely didn't keep ben a secret in the in the books no. but just she kept his force sensitive they were kind of like mm-hmm. they they keep their force sensitive pretty secret right it'll be interesting how they handle that of who knows and who doesn't know because i think i that mean that's probably really... another great way for it to come out of of Ky- of Poe stepping too far. And yeah, but like, I feel like that's probably another big reason that Kylo has to wear that mask is because he is a, a celebrity, kind of? Because he's Princess Leia's son? Yeah. And like, even though the last time I feel like the general public probably saw him, he was much younger, but still? 
Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's another, just another reason that he has to wear that mask. I, yeah, I, I do agree. Um, so I, th- I think it is. So, yeah, I, now we're back to more sad news. Um, we talked about this a little bit before, that Mark went into this article talking a bit about how he wasn't the hugest fan of the direction they took in The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. I do think it was the best decision for this particular story, but I do, I do feel bad that we won't be able to see the original trio together again. Yeah. Well, and that's really what Mark wanted, and he did bring up a pretty valid point of when, especially when Han dies, and he was talking about how Leia or Luke should have been there. They do have Chewbacca there, which is good. But other than that, the only people that you're seeing react to Han's death are people who've known him for a day, besides Kylo. But mm-hmm. it's but it, it is a very of valid point. Causing him the, the, the pain. So. Yeah, that the emotional weight is put on people that didn't know him, who only really knew him for two days and had this very idealized version of him. Yes. So I actually would have. I am glad the story. The, the, with the direction they took, I think it's much better for the story overall and the direction they want to take, and therefore Mark's Mark and slash Luke's plot in the future. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll be interesting to see Luke's reaction when he finds out now, mm-hmm. and I hope that he has some guilt over that. Yeah, and I, I do think he it's already better... kind of knows. I assume. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure he can fe- he can feel it now. Yeah. And I'm sure he felt it when it happened. One, through his connection to Leia, and then two, just because he's Luke Skywalker and he's very good with the Force now. Yeah, he so can he probably sense when it. someone who at one point was his best friend mm-hmm. uh, pro- and let, and his nephew, Boy, he probably has some sort of connection with his nephew, too. Mm-hmm. Because even, I think it was even in either the commentary somewhere where... Uh, Leia is reacting to what Ky- her her not to feeling Han die, but is reacting to what Kylo feels. Right. So she can immediately tell he regrets it, mm-hmm. and I forgot where they said that, but um, like her reaction is being able to tell that her Han has done her son has done something he immediately regrets, and she just knows what it is. Um, I also think it's good that, I mean. Again, to use the word symbolic, I think it's symbolic that only Chewie is there because all the other characters have gone their separate ways, but Chewie has always been there for Han. Well, Chewbacca goes away for a while because well, of the yeah, could, yeah, well, but doesn't he go, like, to his home? It's kind of like when they both are trying to settle down to be family men, though, right? Yeah. Right, but, like, the second that Han, Chewbacca's like, decides to Chewbacca's been with him the pick, longest, yeah, so... And- I'm Obviously, glad he was there. when the family life didn't work for them, both of them just joined back up and went back to smuggling. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, I think last but not least in the main article, I wanted to point out that uh, Carrie and we we've known this that Carrie actually had a bit of a part of the episode eight script. Mm. I don't think she made big decisions or anything, obviously, but she. Ryan was telling stories about how they would just sit on her bed and go through the script and change things and talk for two hours and end up just changing two words. Okay. And so I'm I'm very thankful for that because I think Carrie is a wonderful writer. Mm-hmm. And I I have a feeling I just what she's posted that I her and I share very similar wants for the film. Um, so I I wish she got the chance to look at episode nine uh, i really mm-hmm. do because i i trust her and i i really want to trust colin trevorrow but mm-hmm. i mean we're just too early on for me to give him any he i guess he hasn't done anything to betray me but i'm just so <laughs> he hasn't done anything yet to betray me I, i've been hurt before yeah and uh so moving forward they uh raise Saber. It's officially called called Ray's Saber in marketing now, Got which it. well, actually, it's kind of been for a while. For yeah, for a long time. So I don't know why this is a huge news story. Personally, yeah. to me, I won't lie. I will always call it Anakin Saber, but I think that's just because one, the Clone Wars era mm-hmm. is in the prequel era is kind of Star Wars home to me. Well, yeah, um, and also because that's technically like maybe not like 
in history, it's not where we first see it, but Anakin's the first one to get it in the Star Wars universe. Well, yeah, he built it. And then it's, so... and then it's passed down from there, guys. So. Yeah. So I think the part of me will always, like, call it Anakin's. Um, I just call it the Legacy Saber. Yeah, I honestly, I do too. So that's, yeah, I really honestly just call it the Legacy Saber. Because when you're saying Luke Saber, you I, I can't would never say call it Luke Saber. I would always call it... Gr- Luke Saber's the green one. Right, exactly. So you can't be like, oh, uh, you can't walk up to a counter and be like, hey, do you guys got any, like, Luke Sabers? They'd be like, oh, yeah, here's the green one. You're like, no, the blue one? You're like, well, that's not... What? You what? confuse people in the store. Yeah. <laughs> you, and... you, need to, you need to be specific. And it honestly makes sense that they're advertising it now. Well, they're advertising it for this generation... Because it's mostly toys. To, right. To the kids who... They know it to be Ray's saber. She's and I so that just kind of also implies that she's going to be keeping that saber, which I'm fine with. It's um, okay. It's not what I wanted, but I'm not upset about it. I'm not it. upset about it. And I just can picture Kylo like going to Target, <laughs> seeing this being advertised as Ray's saber, and him just grabbing his red sharpie and scribbling it out, being you know, like Kylo's saber. Kylo belongs to me. The only Kylo's one who should be mad about this is Kylo. Saber. Kylo's yeah. the only one that's furious. Because some people were really upset. And I'm like, eh. I mean, instinctually, I'll probably just call it... I mean, I did, you're right. I call it the Legacy Saber. So I don't know why people are upset about it. I cause Especially because it's from it. marketing. Yeah, because we've had... And it's only in the kid versions of it. Because at my store, when we get it, and we had the big Hasbro, like, $100 Sabers. It says Anakin Saber, the mm-hmm. blue one. And the green one is Luke's. But, like, the, the cheap little, like, you you have to, like, force it out and it collapses. Yeah. Those sabers, that one is, it says Ray's saber. And when we, at least when we get it. It's got Ray on it and it says Ray's saber. And it's been like that since, like, the movie came out, since mm-hmm. The Force Awakens came out. Which makes so, sense because they're marketing to the people who specifically watch that movie. Yeah. So, uh, not a big deal to me, but it was a hoopla for a little bit. Mm-hmm. The, the, the only one who should be mad is Kylo. Yep, um, he's the only one that's allowed to be mad. Yep. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy talked a little bit on the future of Star Wars. Um, mm-hmm. Says basically what we already know, and that they will make another trilogy if they come up with a good story. Which Good. good. That's the... Uh, only if you have a good story. Thanks. Yeah, and I, I'm mostly also, glad about this. Also, that means this. that Kylo's yeah. probably going to stay alive. <laughs> exactly. Uh like Kylo honestly does need to live if they make another trilogy and so I hope that just to keep that option open to keep him alive but um I mean they could always work around it by cloning somebody like that is very possible but oh shut up I know We're, the only clones that are allowed to be in Star Wars are the clones is Jango Fett the only yep. clone well I mean a lot of people thought Rey was like a Luke's clone disgusting yeah so i mean honestly they could do that but i want to take this as please keep kylo alive that's because if they want to make another trilogy the trilogy are skywalker stories and i i mean we've mentioned it once we've mentioned a hundred times but just in case you're new here we really don't think that ray is a skywalker so kind of kind of depends on kylo yep kind of solely relies on Kylo at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of Kylo, there were some fun stories about Adam on set when he's in Kylo mode. Uh, for those <laughs> of you who don't know, Kylo, uh, not Kylo, well, Adam's a bit of a method actor. Mm-hmm. Um, and so therefore he just kind of likes keeping in character, obviously not to a, a 100% degree because he's not right. killing everyone on set. Right. But, uh, kind of likes keeping a mood when he's on set to stay helps him stay in character helps him stay sullen and moody and Mm -hmm. crybaby ish and so there's some funny stories that come from this one of them is from uh john boyega which he talks about and he he said he did do this to harrison ford too because harrison Mm -hmm. ford was also just but he was just a grump he wasn't a method actor he's just a grump and he would just walk up and hug him run up and hug him sneak hug and just he was just like, I'll just go up and hug him. And the interviewer was like, well, does he does he take it? He's like, no, he just waits for me to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if there's footage of this anywhere, it is your responsibility to leak it, whoever has it. I, I only saw the one of him hugging Harrison. Mm-hmm. 
And that's where Harrison wild. just kind of even slaps him. He's like, no, he, out. He just kind of like taps him. He's like, get off me. <laughs> There's your hug, kid. Get off. And uh, I, I love that so much. <laughs> John John's trying. And I love how much John loves the character of Kylo. I have a feeling John secretly wish he could have played Kylo. <laughs> like, when you see all the merchandise, like, John has of Star Wars, it's all Kylo merchandise. He has, like, a Kylo <laughs> Snuggie, the Kylo oh mask. That's so cute. Um, but... Is that where the shippers come from? The Finlow shippers? Yeah, probably. Uh-huh. Probably, because it's, like, it's cute to see the guy who plays Finn have all this Kylo stuff. Yeah. And... Because I think he's even come out and said that, like, people, a lot of people hate Kylo because of what he did to Finn. And Finn was like, you know what? It was a bloody honor. I, I, <laughs> I love it. I'm so, I play Finn and I'm not even mad. No. I, I held my own for a little bit. Being defeated by him, bloody honor. Cute, cute. So, um, there's another story where Mark was talking about how he feels like him and Adam should probably be closer as, like, people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're you're my nephew. I babysat you. He practically raised him. Mm-hmm. So, like, we, me and you should, like, go have lunch or go hang out and to get to know each other a bit more. And Adam apparently just flat out refused, which um, Mark, at least, was very lighthearted about it. He's like, more, uh-huh. more, more power to him, uh, I guess. He's um, probably, Adam's probably nervous, because we all know that Adam is an awkward guy. Yeah. He's an awkward guy. And he he's probably like, first of all, one, uh, Kylo's mad at Luke, so no. Two, I don't want to be alone with Mark Hamill. I can hardly talk to an interviewer. <laughs> he's going to ask me a question, and I'm going to talk about how soft my dog is. And then I'm going to be like, what did you ask me? I'm sorry. I got confused. Uh, honestly, that's probably a lot more accurate than... <laughs> Anything else? Because um, we do know, he said, uh, Adam said this on Larry King, that he was made to go to forced dinners. And... Uh, forced. Am forced, I right? Forced, ha ha. And he was spotted having dinner with Daisy, I think, a couple times during the course of uh, The Last Jedi. So I think it's really funny that, in <laughs> character, he refuses to lunch with Luke, but Ray, he's like... All right. All right. I, I guess I'm so. not gonna like it or anything, but it's not like I want to go to dinner with you or anything. God, like I guess Kylo wouldn't be totally against this happening. Like yes, Kylo wouldn't like those chips. Kylo wouldn't like those chips. Still my favorite Adam quote ever. Um, and Kylo also had this to say. I'm gonna read a quote from him about Kylo's character. I feel like almost everybody is in that rehabilitation state. You know, I don't think that patricide is all that it's cracked up to be. Maybe that's where Kylo Ren is starting from. His external scar is probably as much as an internal scar. Basically. Yo, redemption. It's exactly what I want him to be saying, so. Yep. Good good thing for us. All right, now I'm still on page one, but luckily page two I think will go fairly quickly. Um, but this is where we're getting into the stuff that I know you want you want us to talk about. There was an article that came out that was uh, five things that will and won't be in The Last Jedi. Okay. So the five things that... I have w- no idea what these are. Yeah. Th- so this is actually funny because this is actually what's caused the most amount of uh, discourse. So here's the five things that will be in The Last Jedi, and then we'll talk about them a little bit. Okay. A glamorous casino city called Canto Bight. Characters played by Laura Dern and Benicio Del Toro. A new major character, which is the same thing as characters played by Laura Dern and Benicio Del Toro. Yeah, but I guess they must have meant Rose. And uh, yeah, they do. And mm-hmm. lots, lots, loads and loads of actual hand-built sets. And actually, I only cool. have four of them written down. So whatever the fifth one was, but these are so boring compared they to are. what the won't be in the Last Jedi. Okay, uh, here are the here are the won'ts. Here are the won'ts. One, uh. There, uh, did I not write these down? Hold on. I did. Uh, uh, basically, I didn't write this down word for word, but he said a central romance. He said, well, that. Uh, okay. A major character, a major creature character, new music cool. from Lin-Manuel Miranda. Okay. Explicit political, political allegory, 
and a revelation about Finn's potential for sensitivity, which these are so much more interesting than what will they be are. in the movie. But, they are. Uh, it, like, so one. So, so one. one, the romance thing. This this is what's caused the most amount of of course drama because because one. We up until this point have basically confirmed that Rose and Finn are going to be a thing. That's the one that surprises me. And like we talk about, I mean, obviously I have other shipping biases as well. But the fact that mm-hmm. this was said, I was mostly surprised on behalf of Finn and Rose. Yeah. But there's there was a lot of clarification and things that are done um, since then. Yeah. So basically, the the author kind of sensationalizes Ryan's quotes. Obviously. Um, with the Lin Manuel Miranda, like yeah, John's exact or not yeah, John Sins, not John's. Mm-hmm. John Sins' actual quote was, "There's no one-to-one equivalent of Han and Leia burning unrequited love in our story. That's not a centerpiece." So cool. It, that's all he says. Good and, because neither that doesn't make sense for either of the ships that we thought are going to happen happened. And Ryan said that. Because people were like, what part of you thinks Han and Leia was unrequited? And he was like, these are two separate thoughts. I'm like, it doesn't really seem like it was two separate thoughts. Uh -uh. I think you were probably on a mind train and it made sense to you Uh at the time, but... But that's definitely not what those two had. No. And I'm like, they had very... They were very teasy, but Uh it was never unrequited. No. Um, But he... Over the course of this interview and the different interviews, Mm -hmm. Ryan says basically no one-to-one equivalent a lot because i think uh and what no will one's be gonna be the han later. and leia of this story yeah. which is fine i don't want another same boring romance like that not that i'm saying that leia and han were boring i'm just like what they I have would on much the table right now it. could be a lot more interesting yes it has a lot more build-up and it's a lot complex way more character yeah, development absolutely and so, because Ryan cautions against one-to-one correlations multiple times, because mm-hmm. um, he's earlier on, they keep mentioning Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure Ryan is just tired of being like, oh. He's like, guys, this movie isn't going to be Empire Strikes is Back. Is Octu going to be Dagobah? And they're like, well, there's similarities, but it's not going to be this exact. The there's going to be a lot mm-hmm. of different stuff. And also, Ryan also said that he watched To Catch a Thief as inspiration, for the mm-hmm. casino scenes, but also, cool. and he, he said also for the romance of it all. So a part of me, a lot of the movies that inspire him have a very romantic, like not a very romantic base, but are kind of They're romantic definitely. in tone. Uh-huh. So this, it just kind of seemed out of context. And a lot of people got really upset because, I mean, every one, the, uh, the author himself mentioned Storm Pilot and Raylo. In his mm-hmm. article, he didn't he didn't ask Ryan, so Ryan never heard those words. Right. But the author himself mentioned mentions it. them, and, and then he's like, and then there's going to be no romance. Yeah, and so that kind of freaked people out. But he also mentioned it and called it like fan fiction, imaginary fantasies. So it was very, it was very like, degrading, degrading towards people who have an interest in mm-hmm. romantic subplots. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't understand. Like, what's what's the difference between speculating about a romance than it is speculating about Ray's parentage for some just because quote I'm going to be a bit of a angry feminist here but Mm -hmm. I feel like just because romance tends to be something women are more interested in it's more thrown off I'm like why is it any different for me to care about Storm Pilot or Raylo than it is for me to care about Ray Kenobi it's not any different I just feel like because one is more of a feminine thing to care about they throw it off that's exactly what it is and, and it's why i've never understood why people like belittle f- fan fiction to begin with because i'm not to say that men don't write write fan fiction i have plenty of fanfic writers that i love that are men but the fan fiction world is way more female based and people make fun of fan fiction all the time and i'm like why it's mm-hmm. literally people were sitting writing down novels, full of, novels, like, full novelizations. I've read fanfics that are bigger than most adult books. Yeah, like in and giving people... people content for the times where we don't have new content. Like there, yeah, 
It's really and making up like completely, sometimes completely different worlds mm-hmm. with these characters, or like changing one thing in the movie that makes it spiral in this whole other direction. That's just super interesting. And it's like, well, wh- what's wrong with that? That is so creative, and those people spend so much time doing it, and they write better than most writers I know. Mm-hmm. So what's belittling about that? Oh, because they're women doing it? Got it. Cool. Yeah, and I feel like it's... I honestly feel like they are kind of downgrading it to just this weird, almost fetish thing. Mm-hmm. Like, which it's, I don't, it's not. So I don't understand... I mean, I do understand it's because women in Star Wars scares people, mm-hmm. and women being liking Star Wars scares people. So when you have a topic that that they're interested in, interested in, and I'm like, romance has always been a huge part of Star Wars. So I don't understand why now suddenly it's this shunt topic. But I'll I have a lot to say about this. So I, but I'll say the whole story. Um, Ryan clarified multiple times that he meant. That there's just no equivalent to Han and Leia, um, mm-hmm. so I don't. I really don't think this means anything as, as a trilogy as a whole, which he they clarified multiple times. Yeah. Because which first of all he couldn't say that anyway because we know that he's not gonna have much input in the next movie. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, but like we said that this really surprised me on behalf of Finn and Rose, because mm-hmm. I I do think if they go in the Ray Kylo direction it's gonna be a lot more subtle, mm-hmm. um, and it's gonna be a lot more. I don't think anything's coming to fruition in episode eight. No, um, not at all. But, I don't even know if by the end of nine. Yeah, like, because... It could even just still be super, like, subtle and, by the end of nine. Who knows? Like, because, like, with with this said, I do kind of think maybe expectations F should be lowered. I mean, mine were <laughs> low anyway, but, uh, like, for me, I kind of expected Ray and Kylo to be this unsaid love story where you mm-hmm. just kind of... Where at the end, like, you just kind of know and they know that they just balance each other. That in the end, they just need each other and understand each other like anyone, like no one else really could, given their pasts right. and their abilities. And it's just kind of this uh, connection that they know that, and like, not even, like, explicitly They have a connection, but they never, yeah, but, they never, like, start dating on the movie. It's just that they're important to each other, they're a part of each other's lives, and they always will be. Yeah. And, like, that's kind of how I expected. Would I love something a little more, like, obvious? Yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. going to say that I wouldn't. But that's kind of what I'm... I My hopes and my expectations are a lot different. Yeah. Um, it's like our Ray Kenobi. We're like, that's what I want. That's not what I expect. Yeah. Ex- like, exactly. And, I mean, I still I still expect the Ray Kylo story and love story, I mean, not even, like, explicitly romantic, to be the forefront of these movies... Because it, mm-hmm. I feel like it still needs to be, um, with this being a new generation story and Kylo still being the Skywalker. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could turn it around and Finn's the one who ends up being the one that can super relate to Kylo. But they could. Mm-hmm. I, it just seems like they're making that character Rey. Um, but and, yeah, and also like the writer, the writer of that that first bit added just a ton of his own context and I think it was just to be clickbait and yeah absolutely like like again uh they mentioned that Lin-Manuel Miranda not writing any music when the quote was John Williams is just going to score the whole thing but you had to make it the sensationalized thing yeah because everyone was dying to know if Lin-Manuel Miranda was was gonna write the whole score. That's what everybody wanted to know. Yeah, he he's just a very sensationalized writer. So I don't think there's anything really too, too con- to be concerned about here because I know a lot of people were really worried. But again, they clarified. I'm, I'm still gonna. There's still so much about this story, man. Um, mm-hmm. And like the part that uh, bugged me about it the most was just how they talked about like the the fan fiction, like mm-hmm. this imaginary fantasy. Um to, to the, these fans and honestly a little part of me has the you hurt my friends I'm coming at, like, after you I'm like I don't care what you say about me but uh-huh. don't you dare say that about my fan community like these right. are, like I've met some really great people through the, like, the community fan community of Star Wars Absolutely. and uh, the, even like the ship like aspects of it I've met some awesome people so don't you dare go insulting them I don't care what you say about me but I'm more mad that you're going insulting them and, like, how ridiculous, because you know this guy probably, 
like the, he can't be part of the Star Wars community because we just went to the Star Wars celebration and everything that was officially done by Star Wars was like, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you guys for being so passionate. Most of our crew is made up of people who are just like you, who love Star Wars growing up and now they're working on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So like, why are you belittling those people? Those people are the people working on Star Wars right now. Yeah. Those are, what do you think story group is? (laughs) Like, I I even know there's been said, like a lot of people who have done official stuff for Star Wars used to write Star Wars fan fiction. Yeah. And... I mean, Kathleen Kennedy especially is really, like, good about hiring, like, giving, quote-unquote, no names a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even sort of, like, even though Ryan Johnson wasn't a no-name, but he didn't have, like, a big, like, he wasn't like J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Where, and so Colin Trevorrow really only has Jurassic World. They had, like, one blockbuster under their belts, but that's really it. But yeah. she she's giving them a chance. And, like, uh, the people who built R2 for the new movies were just like this R2 this droid builder builders fan club that they met at celebration one year and like you know yeah. what you want to make them for the movie and like that's just so awesome of them uh but i think like after this whole thing i i will say this uh while we may not blatantly have like this this obvious love story like Anakin and uh Padme and Han and Leia in mm-hmm. this movie like I really think there's got to be inklings of one somewhere after, like after oh, Han's death, especially, mm-hmm. uh, and not being able to see Han and Leia rekindle. I think it's really important to see romantic love work. Or yeah, you need to see all. I feel like you need to see all four forms of love in a movie for it to really work. Yeah, I mean maybe you can deal without eros because you don't need anything to be like explicitly that oh, oh, sexual. Yeah. Don't need, but... don't need that. But that can, like. Because like, like, I love the importance have... of familial love yes. and platonic yes. love. And there's just, like, a purity about romantic love that's, like, gone in modern storytelling, I feel yeah. like. Because, yeah, I mean, the absolutely. romance genre isn't dead, but it's either underutilized or extremely sexualized. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I, I'm still sure we're going to see a love story, like, of some sorts happen. Um, and I hope we can see... Uh, romantic story because they really butchered the other two (laughs) yeah and again star wars has always had a romance in them i mean if you look at those even just looking at the classic like movie posters they're so like cheesy romance spaghetti Mm -hmm. western like photos and i'm like ugh. but i mean it's always been central to star wars is a love story in there somewhere even if it's not at the forefront Mm -hmm. and like that's all really Ryan said, like, even if it's not the forefront, like, he just said, it's not the centerpiece of our story. Mm. Yeah. And, um, like, and which is with the way they've, with the, they've, they've treated Han and Leia, um, I, I hope there'll be some, just some, and with the, I mean, Anakin and Padme just being the, <laughs> <laughs> the hot mess that they the were. hot mess that it was, uh, it's actually quite cool, and hopefully, because of that, we'll, get more time to watch them grow and develop and I hope that's what's happening in 8 so we just won't see something obvious like there won't be an I love you I know but we're gonna have more time to really see these characters which I would be so happy with because through the movies alone I have never fully felt the romances that you're supposed to feel in Star Wars. Clone Wars made me feel that Anakin actually loved Padme Mm -hmm. because I got to see them interact but in the movies I was like he's just some like gross possessive guy it didn't feel like a romance to me so I and I this could mean really good things and I'm hoping it does where it just means that they they have their inklings but so we can actually really see a love story because I mean I I just want I mostly want to see it come from somewhere because especially after what happened with Han and Leia and (laughs) you've got to see romantic love work somewhere or at least yep. for, like this this love story. I want a healthy relationship somewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to see something work out in the Star Wars universe. And I feel like I feel like this is also I'm worried a little bit, but I feel like this might be coming from a place where people are afraid to write romance, especially for female characters who are seen as like strong, because mm-hmm. it's it's just been done horribly so many times. But instead of trying to figure it out, they're just like, oh, we just won't write one instead. 
Which, mm-hmm. like, obviously a woman doesn't need to fall in love, but to most people in the world, falling no, in love is... but there's nothing wrong with falling yeah, in love. Yeah, it's very relatable. And, I mean, I'm a sucker for love stories, obviously. Mm-hmm. And... Me too, and I've been single for a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> so... There's nothing well, wrong with it. Like, we, so we have these, like, really strong female characters. I'd like to see them try to pull off both. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I hope they're just saying they're going to take their time with it, which... Which is, which is great, want. which is what I want. Mm-hmm. But a part of me is afraid. I'm like, are you afraid because you don't <laughs> want people seeing your female characters as weak? Because I'm like, falling in love does not make you weak. At, no. In the slightest, it is a very unbelievable human emotion. It's just we've heard so many bad love stories mm-hmm. that I think people kind of mush the thoughts together. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there was actually a lot of backlash. And the author of the trilogy, or not the trilogy, that's not a person. The article, the article released mm-hmm. the full unaltered statement, which Good. was a, basically the question he asked was exactly what I thought he'd asked. And because we didn't hear the him his exact question before, but the mm-hmm. way Johnson answered, I'm like, oh, he asked directly about Han and Leia. And mm-hmm. that's why um, he answered that way. So, so what was his exact question? Do you the have exact it? question, yes, is mm-hmm. uh, in the original trilogy, there was a Han-Leia romantic relationship. Does a romantic relationship happen in this movie? Johnson replies, not in the way it does in the original one, no. And that's something I would have loved for that to happen. But we're, but when we started working forward with these characters, it just didn't feel dot, dot, dot. Uh, then he asks, does anyone get involved with anyone? Well, you'll ha-, and then Johnson says, well, you have to see. But there's mm-hmm. no one-to-one equivalent of Han and Leia burning unrequited love uh, loves in our story. I can't speak to what Colin is doing, like Colin Trevorrow, but in mm-hmm. our story, that's not a centerpiece. Well, so, there you go. Yep. There's nothing to worry about. That guy, the, the writer of that article is just the worst clickbaity bullshit guy I've ever seen. Yeah. And I, like, I completely agree. Oh, wow. Agree. Way to take his words, like, so out of context. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it was just to get a story. Not even out of context. Like, you just wrote a different question mm-hmm. and gave a different answer for. Yep. And, yeah, so, a lot. I mean, a lot of people were upset, but I think everyone's calming down now because, I mean, because Ryan even said that when people were asking him about it, he's like, I think what I said was pretty straightforward, which mm-hmm. literally his quote was like, there's no one-to-one equivalent mm-hmm. to Han and Leia. And even though he called it unrequited, which... Mm-hmm. Weird, but uh, you in the the full quote, he literally says, "I don't know what Colin's doing, or mm-hmm. I can't speak to what he's doing." And but, you'll just have to wait and see. But there's no one to one equivalent. You're yeah. Like, okay. So well, like, there you go. Good. So there'll be this subtle build up, hopefully. In which Between what I some characters. See, by some characters. Yeah, and even as biased towards Rain Kylo as I am. Like, I'm fine this, with it also being Rose and Finn or something. Yeah, and like this whole thing surprised me in the first place because of Rose and Finn, because right. of how much they were pushing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I mean, it's going to be an ugly color if they bait and switch again. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll it see. Is. Um, but we'll talk about the the rest of the the things not in Star Wars shortly. Um, the first one was a major creature character. These things won't be in Star Wars. And I'm like, this is how you know this is a sensationalized author, because did you forget about Chewbacca? <laughs> there may not be a new one, but we know I for- think they just meant there's no, none of the, like, uh, what were they called in the first movies? The Rathars? Oh, that- Well, we know I there's think a that's sea was- monster. Do we know that there's a sea monster? I, I think that's, like, 98% sure. Oh, because that's what I was thinking when he was like, there's no major creature character. I'd be like, cool, no sea monster. No, I, I still think that one's in there. I think they were talking about, well, he mentioned later comparing, like, Maz. He was saying oh. there's no Maz-like character, which oh. we know Maz is already guaranteed for this movie. We know Chewbacca is. And we mm-hmm. basically already had Yoda confirmed. So... So, <laughs> what does he mean? What does he mean? And then... Yeah, just, Honestly, the his rest of this article, I'm like, uh, cause his the stuff that will be in the movie was so boring, mm-hmm. and like stuff what we will already be in the knew. movie, what lightsabers, be in, like each one Robes. was different. Like, uh, 
like uh, Benicio del Toro is going to be in that movie, and then the next bullet point, a new character is going to be in this movie. And you're like, oh, okay, that's the same thing. I know you're talking about different people, but but it, holy crap, you couldn't. You're clearly a that's how much guy. you're reaching. You think of anything else? Yeah, that's yeah. how much you're reaching to try to make these titles. Um, mm. Yeah, and then we already talked a little bit about this one, but he's like, no new music from Lin Manuel Miranda, but all the quote was literally just, is John Williams doing the whole thing? Yep. Cool. That's, and that's awesome. I like how he made it seem like bad news. Like, no, John Williams doing the entire score is flipping sweet. No, that's sweet. I'm glad that he's still on this. Um, they also said there was no explicit political allegory, which I'm calling BS on that right away. No. Uh, me too. And they, they, in the article, Ryan does talk about it. It's like, there's no orange character that comes out and says, make the galaxy great again. And I don't well, think that's happening. you don't need that. No. But there's times like this. I mean, the George Lucas even said a big inspiration for what the, the political situation in the original movies was the Nixon uh, mm-hmm. presidency. Mm-hmm. So I think there is going to be some political allegory. They're just saying there's not. So so nobody gets mad. Because they had a, ba- a bunch it. of backlash for Rogue One. Um, did they? Yeah, they did. About it what? being yeah, I think they forgot what the original Star Wars was about, and so they just kind of yeah. Trust me. <sighs> oh my god. I think they. Just These are forget. people who've never watched Star Wars before in their life. Yep. And now that like the Resistance is kind of both a Star Wars thing and also what America is kind of using as their term to describe how yeah. they are against our political system or, or right. what is happening our political system. Mm-hmm. So I think they're just kind of like, we, trying we not to split people. We can't condone what's happening. Yeah, but I can pretty much speak with confidence, even even from the quote-unquote sources that I have, that this is not true. Right. Um, and the last one was a revelation about Finn's potential force sensitivity. I I never expected Finn to be force sensitive, but I don't want him to be. Force I don't want sensitive. him, and I know a lot of people do, just because uh, it was a bait and switch, and I think it it was important to a lot of people to see uh, a black man be a je- like a forefront Jedi, and I think a lot of people were attached to that idea, and to do that bait and switch to make it Ray instead. I mean, it was kind of a cheap shot. And I mean, I, I, just, can, I don't think they I were thinking about it. I definitely can understand where that's coming from, but I just having everyone be a Jedi just makes the galaxy seem so small, which is what the Star Wars universe has always had a problem with. Yeah, I, I personally don't want him to be. Force and also, I don't want at least to, to the degree that he beca- that can become a Jedi. Yeah, um, because I, I just. I don't also want it to seem like you need to have superpowers to be able to fight in this universe. Mm-hmm. And I think Finn would be a much stronger character if he just embraces who he is as a person and not has to go on this like mystical journey. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he doesn't really know what it's like to be a person. He's always been a stormtrooper. And I think that's a much better story for him. I agree. Um, so I, I'm fine with it. Um, but again, I'm also... I can see movie, where people are coming from. Absolutely, uh, though. Yeah, it, I'm, I just hope they stop with the bait and switch thing because me too. It's it's just obnoxious getting people's hopes up, and I think they don't. Maybe they didn't realize right away how attached people get to these stories and how much people relate to these stories. Yeah. So when you tease something and kind of take it then away, you rip it away from them. Yeah. Because you think it's kind of like fun. I see, I get why. There's a lot of people who do think, "Ooh, what a twist!" But there's you're also kind of spitting in some people's faces. So, yeah, yeah. I, just I can hope definitely they don't. see that. I just hope they don't continue it. So, um, but, but that's so that is what the author said. But this is the quote that he got this from. Mm-hmm. I talk to Mark Hamill sometimes, and he tells me stories of how he wasn't told Darth Vader was his father until he got on set. I feel like there must be something. I feel like there must be something going on, something that makes me go, "Huh? Why? Why does he wield one? And what's that all about?" It'll be interesting to see if that's ever explored. So, it, I mean, he doesn't completely shut it down. It's um, true. But, I mean, I personally think he won't be a Force-sensitive character. Um, at least, again, to the degree of being a Jedi. He might have those moments. Because everyone's Force-sensitive. Like, mm-hmm. 
there's Everyone people has four who sets can of wield it, and there's people yeah. that just feel it. And there's because actually- I could, I'd be fine with him being like turret level four sensitive. Yes. Where he's like, ah, I can feel some shit. I can like sometimes if I really I need feel connected it, I'd, like, to the dire force. situations, maybe I can draw upon it. But yeah. or like I know I can get the force to work for me. Not that I'm mm-hmm. wielding it any for any way, but yeah. the the force can somehow because I feel like that happened with Chirrut, is that the force rather instead of him wielding it in any way was like oh I'll make my way for you you go mm-hmm. stop this death st- like you, you go send those plans I'll make sure no one hits you for a certain amount of time the force mm-hmm. is like the ocean it's very fickle <laughs> sometimes it'll work for you other times it will crash down and uh, bury you and that's why you shouldn't go to the or- ocean friends yep there you go it's a, t- a terrible the place force allegory but, uh, I mean, even with Han's death, if you look at the concept art for that scene, they say that the light in there is the force making its decision, and that no one really in that room was kind of making the decision of what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. It was the force. So, ah. like, Kylo in the end killing Han was like, no, the force was like, no, this is what needs to happen. Needs to happen. Mm. So, so I wouldn't mind if, like, that is the, the sort of relationship Finn had with the force. But I don't, mm-hmm. I don't mind him being like Han, where he isn't force sensitive. He could just also wield the lightsaber. Han used it. He didn't fight with it, but he used it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, we made it through the notes. Oh, that's all the notes. That's all the notes that I have. Cool. We actually weren't that absurd. But no, nope. I think we were trying to we were trying to stay on topic and try not to get too ranty. Yeah, because I I'm sure honestly like. I could talk about a great number of those things at long length. And, I, like, they will definitely come back up again. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll probably just wait until court's back over here mm-hmm. in California. Yeah, and so I know a lot of people uh, wanted us to talk about, again, Romance Gate, which mm-hmm. is what the, the internet was calling it. Mm-hmm. And, in short, I don't I don't really think it's anything to worry about. In fact, it's it's basically what I wanted from that story and I think mm-hmm. that it's gonna it's gonna be a slower build if anything and I think them what, slow burns are always the best what burns. worries people is now we only have one movie to rely on rather than two mm-hmm. and it's like oh man our chances went down went down by 50 percent and we'll just we'll did just, you really think they were gonna get together in this movie though like come on guys I, I don't think anyone really did but just knowing right. it's out the window is like oh no we <sighs> Because, I mean, they're, I mean, right now, especially on the behalf of Ray and Kylo, I mean, they really don't like each other. So yeah. they really have to get to the point where they can tolerate each other first. They need to at least get to that first. And I don't even know if they'll get to that by the end of this movie, guys. Like, it's only, I, like, an hour and 30 minutes long. Like, and just what we've heard, I think they will get to that point. Um, not mm-hmm. necessarily, like, tolerate each other, but where they really understand each other and kind of oh, yeah. begin to empathize with each other. When they aren't actively trying to kill each other. Yeah, where... Yeah, I think there'll I be a point that. where they can't kill each other. Um, mm-hmm. That has been a rumor where that Kylo has to make that decision again, and he just can't. Um, but anything more than that is like when you close a fanfic because you're like, this is way too out of character. Yeah, I'm like, can't th- read this. This is too rushed, and so I do think that's a really good point to end it. Is well, I mean, uh, like, yeah, I have a couple endings that I would really like, and one of this this was just a rumored ending from about, from forever ago, which I don't think. Mm-hmm this is happening i think it was just made up but i actually wouldn't mind it is the movie ending with kylo like extending his like teacher offer one more time and uh-huh. it just being another cliffhanger of like ray not answering because ray's just, like, thinking about it Ray thinking about it because obviously their dynamic is going to change a lot we do know that and there's a lot of things in canon that we do know about that like their unspoken connection that kylo feels like their destinies are intertwined somehow and these aren't things that are said in the movie. They're said in written databases. Mm-hmm. So if it hadn't, if it, if they totally dropped these stories for the Last Jedi, these these databases were updated well after the Last Jedi had completed filming. Right. So I don't what think the storyline the movie, drop at all. What if the movie ends with Rey extending the teacher offer to Kylo? What the? Twist? What if she's like? You, obviously, don't remember how to use his force. You're very torn up. I've learned about balance. Uh, let me be your teacher. And he's like, oh, crap. Let's and go that's out to dinner. Let's, uh... <laughs> Let's go 
can't have a say. Bite. That's like yeah, they have a bite. A bite. A canto bite. Wink. Yep. So yeah, that's that's really that's really it. I'm again. I'm sure a lot of this will come up again, but I know that a lot of people are wanting to know how we felt about. Yeah, and if you guys want stuff. us to go more in depth on any certain topic, please feel free to leave a comment, and we will we'll try our best to get to it. If there's anything specific that you were like, ah, I really wanted them to talk about this. Yeah, because that's very possible. This is the first time I've ever written lots of notes for an episode, but I mm-hmm. very much could have missed it or missed important stuff. So, uh, yeah, and if you you can tweet at us, uh, yeah. everything is at Nights of Rant on like basically every site. Um, yep. But let us know you if you Tumblr there's us, else you, you want tweet. us to talk about or kind of predict about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are more than something. happy to talk about it. I'm very tired. Um, <laughs> As am I. Yeah, make sure if you are listening to us on iTunes that you subscribe to us on iTunes and maybe leave us a heart. Or uh, you can't leave us a heart, but you can leave us some stars and maybe leave us a review. All of the stars. Because those make us stupidly happy. And if you're listening to us on YouTube, make sure you comment and let us know what you want to hear us maybe talk more about. And maybe give this a is for up. sure our longest podcast we've ever done. Is it? Yep. Oh. I think our long- Congratulations! Yeah, I think our longest podcast was just over an hour. Probably like hour ten minutes. The, the, the trailer breakdown, yeah, I The think? trailer breakdown or the Kylo Redemption one mm, but now it's this now, now it's, it's vanity fair gate oh my, such a whirlwind but yeah guys i don't think there's anything to worry about um i understand where yeah, the no, concern was coming not. from and i will stand up for you guys because don't hurt my fandom don't hurt my friends it's like, okay we'll have a gatekeeping podcast soon oh yeah i do want to do one about just i want to do one really bad really I'm bad for it. yeah i think that will be our next one so unless something in insanely crazy happens we will not have a podcast next friday but mm-hmm. who knows something insane could happen again and i we i could make this happen again yep uh so anyway we're, he- we're here for you we'll go out of our way for you guys yes but only you guys <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for listening to who talks first i am ct i'm solo and we will see you next time <laughs>